Okay, what's up everyone? Welcome to Dark Souls, the ultimate cleric's guide. Now, after doing my ultimate sorcerer's guide, I wanted to do one for faith builds too. It was a super fun guide to make. I experimented with a new playstyle and I was like, you know what? Let's make another one. So I already went ahead, made my character and did the asylum because really the asylum is pretty much the same for every single character. So I didn't think it was necessary to show it. But I'm going to explain some things about clerics. So this cleric starts out at level 2 uh, with the holy robe, traveling gloves, holy trousers, the east-west shield which is kind of crap. It's one of those small wooden shields. And the mace. The mace is actually a pretty good weapon, I have to admit. Uh, I might actually use it as one of my main weapons on this playthrough, but you know what? We'll see. Now, before I go talk to that guy, Petrus, we're gonna go ahead and do something else. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, cl clerics also start out with the canvas talisman and the heal miracle. And I'm gonna get into that more later. And I was also lucky enough to have a short bow drop from the first archer in the asylum. Actually, that's the second archer in the asylum that dropped it. Now, clerics start out with great faith, of course. They start out with 14 faith. I raised it to 15. They start out with dec decent vitality, decent strength, but absolutely terrible dexterity. And having almost no dexterity is really one of their main drawbacks. Okay, one thing I need to mention, because these actually relate. The Morning Star, not a bad weapon. Uh, it's essentially the same thing as the Mace, except it deals bleed damage too. It has a slightly lower attack power, as you can see. Uh, uniquely, this hammer inflicts thrust damage and causes bleeding. Well, causes bleeding is true, but thrust damage, the game is fucking lying to you. The mace deals no thrust damage, so don't think you can use it with the Leo ring, because you cannot. Anyways, I'm actually going to go ahead and switch back to the mace. And I'm going to explain the talisman, the talisman I just picked up once I get back to the bonfire. So yeah, for those of you who haven't seen one of one of these guys before, well, I've only done one for sorcerers. Basically, I'm going to be getting every single ring, uh, weapon, spell, well, miracle actually, that talismans, whatever you can think of that relates to faith builds and clerics, I'm going to be getting it and showing it off. Okay, now we have something more important to do. Talk to this guy. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Thoroland. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. Well, I do have business with you, actually. Hello there. I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance. But I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. So it gives you a copper coin, which is so useless. Uh, I don't even know if you can. I think you can feed it to friend, and that's it. How about this? He gives you a couple of souls for it. Ah, anyway. so uh, yes. The first mi miracle trainer is found right at the beginning of the game. Then first, a covenant with the gods. So he's gonna ask you to join the Way of White, but clerics now already start start out uh, as part of the Way of White. Their ultimate effectiveness will be determined by your efforts and your faith. Okay, so we're gonna learn the gesture the shrug. You can buy lots of kind of basic miracles from him. Uh, Homeward Force Force is really good. We're gonna be getting that soon. Seek guidance and Homeward less useful and of course he sells another copy of heal and great heal excerpt 
He also sells the talisman which we actually picked up. And the Thorland talisman. Which we don't have Come souls again. for. Be affected. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and equip my catalyst. We have two. The talisman has B scaling with intelligence but needs a lower uh, stat requirement. And the canvas talisman has A scaling and a higher stat requirement. Of course we're gonna use the canvas talisman. It's basically the sorcerer's catalyst for clerics. Now the Thorland talisman that Petrus sells is essentially the Ulusil catalyst in that it has a really high um, base adju miracle adjustment but it has barely any scaling. Let's get this guy out. Anyways this is really fun. I'm really enjoying playing a cleric again. It was actually the first uh, character I ever played because on my first playthrough, which was completely blind, back a few days after the game came out, I played a cleric. That guide is still on YouTube, but it's not a guide, it's me failing basically. And that was kind of a semi faith build. I invested some points into fa faith, but. On your first playthrough, you really uh, do not have like a concept of uh, builds and everything, unless you play Demon Souls, which I haven't at that time. But yeah, should I go pick up the ring? Nah, who cares? Let's just move on. So yeah, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be getting every single mir miracle in the game, which is actually not that easy. Uh, getting every single sorcery isn't too bad, but the problem with miracles is that there are some really useful miracles uh, that you can get locked out of. And I'm gonna talk about those later. There's one in particular that's really useful, but if you want to get another miracle you have to give it up basically. I'm still surprised I have the fast roll. Oh well. Let's watch out for this guy. Also, one thing I really like about clerics is their uh, basic equipment. I really like the look of these robes. Especially that little, I guess, purse they have. It's kind of cool. Alright, let's move on. Why did I go in there? There's nothing in there. Alright, let's pick this up. These can be useful early if you need those extra souls for shopping. Let's see if I can... Alright, so you can actually block the dragon's uh, knockback effect. That's good to know. Uh oh, shit. Forgot that the shield is kind of crap. But the mace is really good. As you can see, it can... Oh, shit. Please don't die. That would be really embarrassing if, you d if I died here. God damn. Yep, as you can see, clerics have no poise. Okay. Come on, you bastard. They nearly got me, which would have been really bad. Okay, let's kill this guy too. Anyways, about the heal miracle. As you can see, it has five castings, but be careful because you cannot use it to replace your Estus flasks. Mainly because it takes a lot longer to cast. So normally what I do is I save the Estus for bosses and use heal when I can, when there are no enemies around. I'm gonna go ahead and reverse hollowing. I am online so I might get ganked. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and visi visit, um, what's his name? The undead merchant. I don't know if he has anything to sell. I don't think so. But I'll go and have a look. I might go ahead and buy a heater shield. Although, you know what? I can do fine with this. Even though it doesn't have a 100% block, I can manage. One thing that's kind of funny. Uh, on my first playthrough, I couldn't figure it out how to take out these guys for the life of me. I found them really annoying. 
uh, before I figured out that you can just kick them. Okay, I think if we go back here, actually, we can get a humanity through that door. Okay, so generally about miracles, as a side note, uh, you're gonna find that there are a lot less offensive miracles than spells, like magic spells, but a lot of the supporting miracles are extremely useful. Um, there are a few that are useless, and I'm gonna demonstrate those too. I'm looking at you, Karmic Justice. Let's pick these up. But yeah, there are a few miracles that are really hated as well by the PvP community. I'm mainly talking about Wrath of the Gods and Tranquil Walk of Peace. But we're gonna talk about those when we get there. That's gonna be uh, in a while. Let's see, what else did I want to do? Oh yeah, I wanted to visit the merchant. But these guys are still alive. You know what? Fuck them. I don't think he has anything to sell though, that I need for the playthrough. I might go ahead and buy a bottomless box, it costs a thousand souls which is quite hefty at this stage. Well now, you seem to have your wits about you, hmm? then you are a welcome customer. I, try <laughs> I love this guy's voice actor. Alright, repair power, he sells Lloyd's talismans, I guess that kind of relates to clerics. Uh, essentially what it does, for anyone who doesn't know, you throw it at your opponent and they cannot use Estus. Yeah, nothing that I need. He has arrows, although I don't have enough dexterity to use the bow. And the chain armor, which I have to say is really fucking ugly. I never wear it. Even though it has good defense, yeah, I'm gonna skip on that. Alright, let's get back here. I'm gonna use these souls to level up. Let's see, strength. I don't have a lot of endurance. I'm gonna go for those later. Let's get an entombment slot too. Yeah, that's gonna be fine, because I, well, I wanna get force as early as possible. And we're gonna need entombment for that. Yeah, overall clerics really do start as kind of an average character except for the faith stat. But as I said that extremely low dexterity is really a hindrance. Especially since even some of the strength weapons need like 10 dexterity. Even the short bow which is like the most basic bow in the game needs 12. And I do want to have some ranged attacks. So I'm gonna need to invest some points into dexterity. Let's see, kill these guys. I don't need black fire bombs, but whatever. It's just kind of become a habit to pick them up. Let's see if we're gonna sort these things out. And move on. God, I cannot believe how many times I died to this group, so this group of enemies on my first playthrough. And way to fuck up as I say that. Alright. But yeah, it's just really impressive how much you can improve in this game. Not that I'm bragging, I'm not a very good player. I like to think of myself as an average Souls player. God, this mace is really good. I switched it on my first playthrough to the Battle Axe, which I guess they are similar in many ways. Essentially they have the same moveset, but I don't know. I just like this maze. And what is this? Oh yeah, it's a soul. Alright, now I did take the master key as my starting gift, as always. So I'm gonna pick these up. As always. Now, I think I... No, I don't think I aggroed the spear guy. Uh, hollow warrior armor. This is why I want a bottomless box so I can deposit all this shit. 
Oh shit, I cannot one shot them. I forgot. Come on, you asshole. Alright. And bam, you're dead. And you're dead too. What did he drop? Oh, the spear. Well, you know... No, I'm not gonna use this, the spear. Uh, for this playthrough, I... For my main weapon, I'm either going to keep the mace or I want to try out the war pick, I think it's called. We'll see. I don't know how powerful the war pick is. I think it is pretty good. Kind of on the same level as this weapon. So it's just going to come down to style. I guess the mace kind of relates more to clerics. And for my secondary weapon, I want to make... Uh, divine or an occult weapon. An occult weapon is really good and I'm probably gonna use the gargoyle's halberd but that might change you know I haven't decided yet oh shit didn't mean to fall off I actually managed to miss this guy once which was really stupid god I might miss him now no I didn't and I got large titanite shards, which is extremely good. You want to get those instead of the chunks. The chunks are a lot easier to find in-game. Got farming those slugs, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Kill this guy and backstab him. Alright. We have the first boss of the game, Taurus Demon, he's extremely easy. Let's see, we're gonna go ahead and use a uh, Pine Resin. Come on, there he is. I wanna try doing the jump attack drop down to get the extra damage, but I'm afraid that I'm gonna like fly over his head you know what, screw it ah shit well, that was a fail oh well god he might actually kill me here alright don't worry I can recover from that cause you can actually do the drop attack not the jump attack and you get extra damage from the drop. Okay, I got this guy. No problem. Oh. He still had a sliver of his health left. But yeah, as you can see, the mace is extremely powerful. Especially if you two-hand it. Alright, let's just move on. Yep, I'm great for... Well, not no, no, no can't even talk it's great that you did it is what I meant to say I'm gonna go ahead and talk to Solaire oh by the way one thing I forgot to mention is I actually got better internet over the weekend so I can actually upload uh, longer videos now probably n never gonna go over uh, kind of 30 minutes I think anything beyond that is stretching it now that I am undead I have come to this but land, yeah, thirty-minute videos are kind of an advantage. You find that strange? It just allows me to play longer, no, and I don't have to keep interrupting. Now. Just no. makes the playthrough <laughs> flow better. Sorry, Solaire, I, I kind of talked over you. Oh. Aha. So I didn't scare you. No, you didn't. I, have a proposition. If you have a I just really like listening to this guy. Yep. The way I see it. He is really cool. In a land brimming with hollows. Could that really and he has some great miracles. So what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? Yep. This pleases me greatly. Well then, take this. Alright, the white sign, soapstone. And now we can get summoned. Anyways, the last thing. Well, actually, not the last thing. One more thing we're gonna do is, of course, head back to 
our trusty bonfire. Kick the ladder down. Spend some of these souls. I might just go ahead and get 12 dexterity and get that out of the way. I think 12 is like, uh, even if you're gonna be a strength build, kind of like 10 and 12 dexterity is gonna do you some good. And endurance, and let's put one into vitality. Okay, I think we're good like that. Alright, I can use the short bow now, which I'm really, really not gonna do much. Uh, I don't. I'm not gonna use like archery in this playthrough. There are a couple of ranged offensive miracles, but we're only gonna get those much later. Huh? I'm surprised that dragon didn't. There you go. Now all we have to do is wait for him to fly down. Come on, you red bastard. Alright, there we go. Just be careful. Uh, I think he can actually land on you. If you uh, run, run out too early. But anyways, we have a bonfire here. And this is kind of like a shortcut to the undead parish. And the dragon just disappeared. He's flying away, actually. Goodbye dragon. I think that that's a drake actually, not a dragon. And here, we're gonna be visiting this later in the game. We cannot do anything right he here right now, but... Oh, that's the message. I thought we could like interact with this. I was like, what? This place is known as the Sunlight Altar. Uh, it is basically a place to join the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant, which has uh, three miracles, one of which you can only get in New Game Plus. Alright, let's kill this guy. And I'm gonna show you that one off as well. The one you can only get in New Game Plus. Anyways, here, just go ahead and run. Don't even worry about these guys. Because this is a major shortcut. I don't think you can kill this guy, yeah. He's a one-time enemy. Oh, come on. It's a lot more fun when some of them get crushed by the gate. Here we get the basement key, which is... I think that's the one that opens Havels. I don't know, I never use these keys, and I never learn their use, mainly because I take the master key almost always. Actually, I think the basement key leads to Capra Demon. Alright, you're dead. And we have the halberd. Uh, let's see, check it out. 16 strength, 12 dexterity. Halberds are extremely good weapons. That's why I'm gonna be using the gargoyle one. That's even more useful. Okay, let's lure this guy out. I think you can actually parry that move, but I'm not sure. I've never done it. And bam, you're dead. Let's quickly go in and heal up. Oh, the spear guy's here. Luckily, he's extremely slow for some reason. Maybe he just doesn't want to fight me. Which is understandable, because I'm gonna kill him. A titan and shard, wow, that's... That's actually helpful. These guys rarely do drop um, Titanite shards. Okay, all I have to do now is not get invaded here. Which actually can happen and it happens quite often. People like to invade here like at low levels with like Quailax, Fury Sword and, and like kill you in one hit. But you know. That's just how some people play. Finish off this guy. Ah, I was hoping for a... Fuck, I'm getting invaded. 
See, this is why I don't like playing online, especially when I'm making a guide or something. So you know what, I might just have to go offline. It's not the invasion uh, that annoys me, it's kind of like waiting here and everything. And sometimes the invasion like fails and gets glitched or something and this white fog is here, but yeah, so it gets annoying after a while. So are you gonna invade or are we just gonna be stuck here? Hopefully this guy isn't one of those guys that I just mentioned, but he's probably gonna be either using like lightning or fire weapon. Probably gonna get killed here. No. Well, I just got really lucky, I guess. But yeah, I'm probably gonna play offline. Just for this reason. I do like getting invaded, it is fun. But so many of the players uh, you meet can like one shot you and everything. It gets annoying. Anyways, I wanna check out one more thing before we end this episode. Let's talk to well, Andre. Must be a new arrival. I'm Andre of a store app. If you're a Okay, of course got the gesture. And if we go to purchase item Um where is it? Here it is, the war pick. Costs eight hundred souls. C and D scaling. It has the exact same attack power as the mace. It deals a bit more m bit more cause it scales with dexterity too. So you know what? I'm actually gonna go ahead and check this out. Let's see, war pick. Yeah, it's basically the same thing, isn't it? Oh, it has a sideways. You know what? I'm gonna be using this weapon. I know that the uh, mace relates more to clerics, but you know what? This weapon has like a sideways swing, which is actually really useful in this game. You wanna have a sideways swing. But if, you know, I get into late game, I have a bunch of souls, I might go and upgrade my mace. Well, uh, you need any Let's see if we can, no, not modify, reinforce this war pick. Alright, I only have one titanite shard, I forgot. Alright, so we have a war, war pick plus one. Our shield, our miracles, everything is in, is in order. I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here guys. I hope you all enjoyed the first part of my ultimate sorcerer's guide. Oh shit. I just screwed that up, didn't I? Ultimate cleric's guide. I'm gonna have to get used to that. I've been saying ultimate sorcerer's guide so many times that it's gonna take me time to adjust. Anyways, it is gonna get a bit more interesting from here on out. The early game is pretty much the same for most characters. But once we start getting more miracles, spells and weapons, you're gonna see kind of like the distinct playstyle of a cleric. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this first part. Like this video if you enjoyed, comment and everything. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.